Steady bass is one of the great foundational grooves for playing fingerstyle blues, but the steady bass just sitting on the one chord for as long as it does can sometimes start to feel a little bit monotonous. In this lesson, I want to show you a few ways you can liven up your bass lines by choosing your spots and changing up what the bass is actually doing without really messing with the basic steady bass all that much. So it adds color and it adds depth and interest, but it doesn't make your life a whole lot more difficult. I'll be demonstrating these ideas on the classic tune, How Long Blues, which I played during the intro. And there is tablature for my arrangement of How Long Blues available inside my membership, the Fingerstyle 5. You can learn more about that and sign up at fretboardconfidential.com. Okay, so the tune, How Long Blues, I'm playing it in A, and it's an eight bar blues, which means the chords do change more often than they do in a 12 bar blues. So that alone is gonna help keep things moving. But basically we've got two bars of A, and then two bars of D. And then things move more in the second half of the tune. We get a bar of A, a bar of E, and then back to A with some kind of turnaround phrase and maybe a quick trip back to the E at the end, right? So in those first four bars, that's what I want to focus on because it's two bars just sitting on A and then two bars just sitting on the D. So what can we do? We basically want to do anything that will keep the feeling of the A chord without having us sit there for like eight whole beats just sitting on A. Now, one of the simplest things you can do is rock between the root and the fifth of A, right? So going from A over to E and then back to A. And that works great for the first bar because you don't really hear it as going to the E chord. You just hear it as going to the fifth of A. So you can have the melody up top. Now the thing is, if you just go to the E again in the second bar, it doesn't really work quite as well because you're not setting yourself up for the D chord in the third measure. So you got to think about what you're going to do. You could just play A and then E and then A again and sit there for the four beats, which would be okay because you've broken it up a little bit, but the melody has a little gap. Right here before we get to so you could actually do something in that little space the simplest thing to do to get the e in there again is to do something that does change the steady bass rhythm a little bit which is kind of a slick move one and two and three and four and so you're adding in an extra bass note one two and three on the end of two so that means you get this one two first bar second bar so it gives you a little bit of that one to five to one feeling for the bass but it also does it when nothing else is happening on top so you can concentrate on that trickier rhythm right so It's perfect, right? Because while nothing's happening on top, you got a little more bandwidth, right? For doing something that's trickier rhythmically. You could also do a bit of a climb. I talked in a previous lesson about adding the triplet feel into the melody of a blues. You can put a triplet feel on the bass as well. So one and two and three and four and one and two and a uh, three and four and. So you're gonna climb. The triplet feel is really on beat two. It's one and two and a uh, three, four. And it's nice to go back to the A because now the A is taking you over to the D chord. And again, it falls in that gap where the melody isn't. Very 
slick. So that's two things you can think about, rocking between the one and the five, and then putting in different kinds of rhythmic moves when the melody's at rest. And the third thing is just to think about different ways you can voice the chord. So you can play D7 like this, and you can play it like this with the third or the F sharp in the bass. So the melody could sit here over this D for four beats, and then it could go to F sharp. Right, so one, If you wanted to get really tricky, you could think about playing half a bar of D7, half a bar of D over F sharp, and then go to a chord substitution. You could go to basically, you could think of this as an F chord, or you can think of it as a kind of D minor seven chord with a third in the bass. So then you would get this. You're on D, D over F sharp, and then D minor. And you could even combine that with the idea of the triplet bass. One, two, and a three, and four. All right, so then the whole opening half of the tune becomes. a far cry from just sitting on the bass for eight beats of A and then sitting on the bass for eight beats of D. It's very different. Adds a whole nother level of depth and texture to the tune. So if you wanted to practice these ideas, you could start on A just playing the steady bass and then you could practice changing the bass one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then you could look at what the fingers need to be doing, which is playing on and four and one. And again, I talked in a previous lesson about sort of thinking about how the melody is phrased. But so this is and four and one. That's what you really need to be able to do over here. And so if you can coordinate that, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So you need to be able to get that thumb going over on beat three and four and one. So you're not even worrying about the melody. You're just trying to isolate the rhythmic issue, which is being able to play and four and one on top while the thumb is trying to do two different things. And that would apply to also playing that triplet bass run on beat two. So one, two, and a three, and four, and right. And you could just stay on the A chord and just practice combining that phrasing on top, and four, and one, with two, and a three, and going back. Because what happens is that's just a pinch. This is just the bass. And then this is reaching over on the end of three to get that melody note again, and then coordinating it with the pinch on beat four. So one and two and a three and four and one and two and a three and four and. When you break it down like that, there's not very much happening at the same time it's like this dance between the thumb and the finger. And what matters is you keeping track of what beat you're on so that you're doing the right part of the dance at the right time. So that's the idea. When you want to start adding these kinds of trickier things into an arrangement, it really helps to know what the basic tune is built out of, knowing that it's sitting on A for two bars, then it's sitting on D for two bars, and knowing how the melody relates to the overall structure of what bar is happening when, so that when you want to start adding things in, you're starting 
from this place of understanding how the tune is built in the first place. Now you're just dressing up the tune with these cooler elements rather than trying to coordinate this whole complicated thing from scratch before you really have a strong sense of like where are the beats, where are the chords, what's this song really built out of. If you'd like tab for the kinds of exercises I've been showing today and tab for the overall arrangement of How Long Blues that I played at the intro to this lesson, all of that's available inside my membership, The Fingerstyle 5, which you can learn more about at fretboardconfidential.com. In the meantime, if you've got a question or a comment about today's lesson, please leave it down below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.